Alrighty guys, welcome back to the cockpit. Got another bit of interesting news today to go over with you on our short flight. So, first of all, just got all the oil changed. Um, it is Wednesday. I took off work today to go fly somewhere else, um, but we had to scrap that plan because of weather. So I was like, well, I'm already off work. Canceled my meetings anyway, so I'm just going to go to the airport and get some maintenance done. Now, you're going to ask, well, how could you go fly somewhere if you had to change your oil? Well, I was going to fly a different airplane somewhere else, and I'm going to get into all that when we get in the air, um, because I might have to be making some decisions about this airplane very soon. So, um, we'll go to the checklist real quick. GPS is updated. Look for half deflection. We're good. Already halfway through the checklist. Let's hear those avionics. We'll get our weather real quick. Um, that's 119.7. Here we go. Four, four, two, Zulu, weather, wind, two, two, zero, at six, visibility, one, zero, clear, below, one, two, thousand, I temperature, one, eight, Celsius, dew point, four, altimeter, three, zero, two, two. Parking brake, tow brakes, pause of control systems there, gyro instruments. Quick check right here. There's no behind me today, so I'm going to do my run-up while I'm here. Prop control, ammeter, suction, left, right, mag. Um, that's all run-up stuff. Okay. So you guys can probably see it. I don't know if you can or not, but this uh, AB30. I went to my mechanic. We went to update this up to the newest firmware, and the Wi-Fi like, connection blipped out while we were doing it, and it totally bricked the unit. Now... I called Uavionics, the company that makes these, and they said that that is a known issue with them, and that's actually one of the things that they were trying to fix with the new software update. So they like, yeah, send it to us. So they send it. I sent it to them. It's way out of warranty. They fixed it for me. I'm assuming I haven't reinstalled it yet, but they said it's fixed, and it's good to go. So, um, yeah. So I got to go back over there and have that reattach. We got to um, reattach all the wires and everything like that not allowed to do that by myself so we're waiting on that luckily i have backup instruments and i've been flying on backup instruments for the past like four or five flights um everything i have in here is is fine without the the ab30 so that's kind of nice there's good practice too yeah so we're waiting for the engine to warm up actually it's in the green now so we'll go ahead and um get our run up done so oh, mixture's coming full rich 1700 brakes are holding suction's good Engine instruments are all in the green. We're charging. This is another issue. I'll tell you why in a second. Um, everything the pressures are holding. Okay, here comes two left. Good drop, two right. Good recovery, one left. Good drop, one right, one good recovery. Prop. There's one for manifold pressure. One for RPM. One for oil pressure. Back down to a thousand. Really. The last flight we were on was actually a night cross-country flight. I told this you guys this in my last video, but the generator stopped charging. Um, and it's been intermittent for the last few flights. I don't know what's going on in intermittent issues. The worst one to try to find because every time I go to troubleshoot it, it's working. So we don't know what to troubleshoot and what to look for. We can't just chase wires. You could, I guess, but it would just take forever. So we don't know what's going on with the generator right now. I have another one on order, a serviceable replacement. So we're just going to swap that and see if that fixes it. Uh, it was a cheap enough replacement, so um, that's going to be our first step. Just straight up swap it. These generators go out a lot, um, so we'll try that first. And fingers, fingers, fingers crossed that that solves the issue. But again, right now it's charging, so we're going flying. We'll stay local. If I lose it in the air, not a big deal. You legally don't even need a generator during the day to fly. Um, so, like I said, I have everything on battery, and all this runs on vacuum, so you really don't even need it. Um, legally, you need it to fly at night, though, so can't fly at night until I get that fixed. All right. Prop, 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 and throttle work good. Four takeoff checklist flight. Yeah, we'll get everything ready right here and just roll out. Fuel selector handles where I want. Flaps are good. Mixture prop cow flaps. All good for now. Um, and we'll bring on the fuel pump when we get out there. Strobe beacon nav light landings. I'm not going to use that. Seat belts are on. Door is closed. Window is closed. Pilot retraction lever. Expect engine die. Takeoff will go over that when we get out there. All right. And Berkeley County traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey on the ramp, taxi out to runway 23, Berkeley County. 11 Whiskey, Berkeley County, runway 2207, altimeters 3022. We have a. None reporting. Why, thank you, Bo. Alright, there's no one on file. We're just going to roll out, so I usually stop beforehand, but I'm going to try this today. I already did my run up, already did my um, before takeoff checklist, so let's just finish it out. So mixture's going to come in, prop is full. Strobe lights can come on now, and we'll bring our boost pump on. Check our flaps. One final check. Oh, 
Pong on free and correct. Berkeley County traffic, Mooney 2711, Whiskey, taking off runway 2 tree. Uh, straight out departure, Berkeley County. Alrighty. Here we go. Nice and easy. All right, pressures are holding. RPM look fantastic. All the engine, men, engine instruments are on the green. Amps are charging too. They're 65. Nice, easy. Tap the brakes. Pause the brake. Gears coming up. Gears up and locked. A little bit of right rudder. A little bit of trim. Keep that nose right there. Good pitch for a 120. Everything is looking real nice. Flaps are coming up. A little bit of low level wind shear today. We're expecting. All right, there's 500 coming back. 25. One, two, three, four, five. Easy six and seven. 25 squared on the climb out. We're gonna go to our fuel flow. Lean it out for 13 and a half. And Berkeley County traffic. Mooney 271 on Whiskey departing off the upwind for runway two tree headed out to the northwest. Last call, Berkeley County. Wing light and fuel pump coming off. Flaps are good. Trim is set. Everything's good. Burning a little bit too much fuel. We'll lean it. And uh, we're going to maintain this heading for now for our departure. Uh, we'll get some traffic off to our right. So we're just going to go up to west as best, even if not 2,500 feet. I love having a nice fresh oil change. Next 50 hours are good to go, man. And this thing barely burns any fuel. Or <laughs> it doesn't burn much fuel either, but it doesn't burn any oil, which is really nice. All right, there's 2,500. Bringing the power back. We'll go 19 inches today. We're not trying to impress anybody. 2400 RPM. Top flaps come close because the pressures are good. Everything here is good. All right, guys. So first things first today. Again, I had a, had a, had another flight plan. Had to cancel it. Not a huge deal. Um, but I'm dropping off my airplane at, back at Somerville today uh, because I did order a new generator that I want to replace. Which, by the way, it's still working. Unbelievable. Um, I want to replace the generator. I think. <laughs> I don't know what to do. It's like intermittent. It sucks. Um, but troubleshooting these electrical problems are a huge pain in the ass. I talked to two mechanics. Both of them say it really sounds like it's the generator. Um, and that's without have, you know paying them hours of labor to troubleshoot it. So um, it's something I can do myself. I've taken out the generator before um, under the supervision of, a, of an AMP to replace the starter. So it's not it's not really even a big job. It's, it's pretty simple to do. Um, two bolts. Um, with, for the wires and then um, a couple of bolts in the front, some safety wire. So um, it seems like an easy enough thing to try. And if that doesn't work, then we'll take the next step. Um, and if that doesn't work, then I have a good generator I can sell um, and recover that, that cost. So that's my thought process on that. Next, when I was looking for a CFII, somebody reached out to me and gave me some recommendations. And then right after that, he's like, oh, by the way, do you know anyone who wants to buy a Mooney? And I said, I don't know anybody that wants to buy a Mooney, but, you know, what do you got? And what you got in case I come across somebody? So he sent me some pictures of this Mooney. It's an M20E. It's a 1964 M20E, so same exact plane as this one, except it has a brand new motor, a 400-hour motor on it, and um, a really nice panel. It's like dual G5 setup with the GNC or the GTN 750, which I'll overlay a picture here, but the, 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 the uh, 750 is so nice. It's got a rudimentary autopilot in it that he's wanting to upgrade to the GFC 500, which you can do with the with the G5 setup he's got in there. Real clean panel, um, brand new motor, uh, just a really good looking plane. Comes with a hanger too, which is kind of cool um, over at Somerville. And so I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, well, shit, I kind of like this plane. Maybe I want to buy it. I end up talking to this guy, and he, you know, he shoots me a price, and I'm like, man, that's at the upper limit of what I can do. But I'm thinking, well, if I sell this plane. You know, I, I worked through the numbers, and it's it's doable, basically. The, with the equity I have in this plane, I could put a down payment on the new plane um, and have, like, six years of payments left over just in equity that I had in this in this plane. So it, it, it kind of works out. Now, that I know some of you guys are, oh, the interest in this and that. I know. I know. That's what's holding me off from this. So I haven't done that. But then he said, well, maybe you'd be interested in a 50-50 split on this thing. He's like... Uh, he doesn't fly it that, that often, so and I fly very often, so that might work. He is a jet pilot. Um, he flies a Phenom out of Charleston. So he's got connections in the industry, um, and he's just a cool guy. I've been talking to him for weeks. He was the person I was supposed to go to Ohio with today, um, just for shits and grins. We're going to take the Mooney up there and um, go pick up a dog, actually, and come back. Obviously, couldn't do it because of the weather. And he actually made that call. So that, that thing's fully IFR certified. Obviously, he's a IFR commercial pilot. Um, and he even said, no, no, let's just not push it today. Um, so, he ended up not going. But he's really cool. Um, 
which you got to have that when you're going to own an airplane with somebody. And, um, yeah, it, the, the plane is so nice. And so if I can do a 50-50 split, that cuts all my costs in half. He's also an A&P mechanic, so we can work on the plane together. Um, and it's at the airport that I always use um, for my, my mechanic work. Uh, my mechanic over at, uh, is at, over at Somerville. So it, like, it, it makes sense that way. So I'm really, really thinking about doing this. Obviously, if I, the, the plane that I'm looking at is, is more expensive than this one, so it's something I have to consider. But there's things I'm thinking about, like safety, reliability, things like that, right? It's, you're paying for a brand new engine. This engine is mid-time, so, you know, it's not, I got another five or six, maybe 700 hours before overhaul, I think. So that's, that's not terrible, but I mean, if I'm going to keep this plane for another, you know, however many years, and I start, and I keep putting 200 hours a year on the airplane, I'm going to have to put an engine in this plane, so i got to consider that cost. i got to consider the cost of the maintenance that I'm continuing to do on this airplane, right? Um, it's a very reliable airplane. The engine runs so amazing right now. Um, but, you know, starter, generator, things like that are going up. This airplane had all that done a couple of years ago. Brand new engine. All the components are redone. If you guys look at the picture, I'll overlay here. It's just a brand new clean engine. So that, there's cost savings there. And really, you know, if we end up going in together and working on this and getting an autopilot in there, then it's really, truly an IFR machine. Not just a, you know, marginal VFR day or descent or ascent through clouds day your airplane, you know what I mean, like this one would be. You know, I'm not going to be flying heavy at IMC with this or shooting low approaches at minimums with this airplane. You know, it's it. you could argue it's capable, but that's, you know, my personal minimums will certainly be above that. But having an autopilot that shoots approaches um, and a really nice panel on the GNC, or the, uh, the uh, 750 in there, you know, makes it, makes it a more capable aircraft. So, um, it's something I'm thinking about, and I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So today we're going to go, I'm going to go over there and meet up with him. And, um, yeah, we're going to go fly the plane. So <laughs> when we when we planned to go to Ohio today, that was kind of the plan, right? Fly all the way to Ohio. I was going to get some actual IMC time, um, and he was going to be my safety pilot. You know, when we when, when he called me and said, we're not going to end up making that happen, um, I was like, all right. Well, I'm not, I already canceled my work meetings. I'm going to go fly and work on the plane. And he's like, oh, cool. He's like, well, let's fly my plane. I'm like, shit, yeah, let's do that, too. So I was like, perfect. So I can fly my plane over there. We can go fly on his plane. He can drop me back off at my airport. So I can drive my car home. It all works out. Um, so super stoked for that. Um, and just a fun day of flying, you guys. Um, that's a cool little grass strip airport near us. That's it. In my last video, I think, I told you four pair of motors, too, right here. Holly Hill. To Holly Hill. Camera died in the air. A gorgeous day, man. It's and he and I are going to head home, and I'm going to freeze my ass off because I didn't wear long sleeves. Um, where should I go? Hilarious problem to have. Maybe I'll go to Orangeburg and get some fuel. No. I don't want to shut down. If I shut down, I might lose my generator. <sighs> what else is going on? Oh, dig this, man. I put a like a Super 21 decal on this blank spot in my, uh, in my stack here. I think it looks freaking amazing. Um, shout out to my mom. She uh, has like a cricket at home, and... She's like, oh, we can make decals. I was like, I got an idea. We made this cool decal. I actually got a whole bunch right here that I made. Um, just like Moody logos and different size Super 21 logos. So I'm going to give some to this dude, see if he wants them. And then I also put, like I had a blank spot here in the panel. So I put a little Moody logo in there and make it kind of look a little more uh, finished off. It looks pretty cool, I think. Um, aside from that, I'm still working hard toward my IFR. I'm getting really serious about it now. Um, so I know I've been saying that for a while, but um, I officially can tell you that I am. So I, I know when I'm flying with my instructor. I don't have my check ride scheduled yet, but because in case something happens with the planes and I don't get to fly with the inst my instructor, I don't want to have to you know reschedule that. So, but I've got four days in the books. I've paid for them already for unlimited flying with my CFII um, to get all the instruction that I'll need. Or to, or to take my check ride, I've got my um, my test scheduled for the first weekend in March. So I am studying my ass off every night, every day. I'm studying. I've got Shepherd Air. I've gone through my sporties, all that. I'm studying, studying, studying. Oh, I should have went the other way. I should have went to the coast. I don't know why I flew this way. God damn it. Um, I'm really excited to get this new AV-30 set up because um, for the past, I don't know how many hours I've been flying under the hood doing all my like instrument hood time, I've been doing it without this AV-30, which is my artificial horizon and my slip skid indicator. 
So you can't do slip skid. You can't fly real IFR without the slip skid. So this being gone would would not allow me to fly off. I already can't do that. I had to have this whole plane recertified because I've opened up the pedostatic system to replace this. Um, there's a couple other things that we've done that like voided the IFR certification, so I can't fly actual IMC in this aircraft right now. Anyways, so, but it's really good practice because like I lost that really valuable instrument, uh, and I've been able to fly it fine. I've got my altitude, I've got you know my nav one for my ILS stuff, and then I've got my my GPS here. It's you know my vertical speed and my DG, so and airspeed. It turns out that's all you need to fly an airplane even if you can't see out the window. Man, days like this when I'm putting around in this plane and it's just so comfortable and nice in here. I love the interior of this aircraft. The engine runs so damn good. It, it makes me really not want to sell it. You know, it's like, man, I've got my own airplane. Um, everything is exactly where I left it when I, you know, from the last time when I get to the plane. I really, really like that. So, but if I'm honest, it is really expensive. Um, which I'm sure you already know. So being able to split the costs on, on some of this stuff will be nice. And look at this, no autopilot thing is just locked in. Still charging, what the hell? By the way, I know it's not the gauge because I have another gauge over here that shows my voltage and I was only seeing 12.1 volts and then it slowly started degrading, right? So I could tell I was the battery was not charging, I was running off the battery. So. I for sure know that it is something with the charging system, hopefully the generator, but it's not, I know it's not the amp gauge. So there's something cool about a Mooney I'll tell you guys about. If you see this little valve right here, it's a button actually, but it's actually a valve, a release, vacuum release valve. Um, there's a thing in these mo these old Moonies, not all of them have it anymore because it's really hard to get parts for it, so when it breaks, pretty, people pretty much just take it out. But it's called the PC system, positive control system. Not political correctness, they don't care about that. Positive control system. So what it does is it's like an upset recovery type of thing. Like um, if you're flying the Mooney and you, it feels real tight, like if I do this, watch. It comes right back to level. Do this. It always comes back to level. Well, it's supposed to, right? It's an old system, so there's like little vacuum leaks and things like that. But that's the idea is that it, it holds the plane level no matter what. And you have like a roll trim up here so you can kind of like level the ailerons a little bit. And if you want to override that for takeoff and landing so you don't have to fight the yoke so hard, you just depress this button. And then it's it's like flying any, any airplane without without the PC system. And the way it works... God, that's so annoying. 1228, oh my god. Um, the way it works is there's... Um, I don't know what you call them. I want to call them servos, but like vacuum diaphragm servos in the wings. Um, and that's all I know. I mean, there's a whole like plethora of vacuum tubes and junk down here for the autopilot behind the panel. Um, and it knows it knows your attitude, and then it, it corrects you. And the autopilot works off the same thing. When you're using the autopilot, it's using those vacuum servos to do that. So um, another way to quickly disengage the autopilot is to hold down this button. So, um, yeah, kind of a cool thing. A lot of guys take them out, especially if you upgrade the autopilot, you just take this out. At which point, if you take this out, you don't even need the vacuum system anymore, which um, would be really sweet. You can save a bunch of weight and take out all that junk out of the wings and this off there, and you could put a button here for your push to talk. Um, the only thing I'd have to replace is my attitude indicator because that is um, vacuum, but no big deal. You can get an electric one of those. Of course, if you lose your electrical system, um, you no longer have that as a backup, but who gives a crap? You have two AV30s here with ba internal batteries, so you don't even need the vacuum system if you don't care about this autopilot, which... Um, I'll never put an autopilot in this airplane because it is really expensive. It's like, I don't even know, twenty to $30,000, I'm thinking, for this plane. I heard a quote for the other one was like 19000 so, um, yeah, very, very cost prohibitive to, like, install a brand new autopilot in an airplane. But anyway, that's the positive control system. Kind of cool. And like I said, in this airplane, it works. Um, the autopilot works. You, gotta, you know, it's not great, but it does do altitude hold, and it will... It will track a heading, so, you know, pretty cool, pretty cool. Here's the wind chair. Whoa, look at that. Holy shit. Instantly. 1,800 feet. Go, 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 Look at this. Whoa. <laughs> That's incredible. 2,500 feet, smooth as butter. Below 1,800. Eh, 
nasty. Whoa. Tighten up that seatbelt, man. Bamberg traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey, two miles to the south, maneuvering into the left downwind for 23 for a full stop, Bamberg. And Bamberg traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey is left downwind for 23 full stop, Bamberg. Alright, there's downwind. There's my numbers, I'm about too fast to put down the gear, so I gotta wait. Okay, below gear speed comes the gear, gear is down, locked, pulled, and indicating. Power comes back, it's already there, mixture and prop full. One, two, jump for 100, holy cow, it is nasty down here, man. Alright, so we'll keep a little bit of extra speed while we're down low maneuvering. Bamberg traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey's left base for 2-3, full stop Bamberg. Man, this is... This is a good day. I've flown this in, you know, much windier conditions, obviously. That trip to Chicago was a lot worse than this, but it's good to get out here and fly when it's windy like this, and not just smooth, nice air. All right, turn to final. Here we go. Power comes back. We are full flaps. 90 at least to the turn. We're over that. We're 95, which is what I said I was going to do. Keep a little speed in. All right. Gas on the tank I want undercarriage is down and locked and indicating. Make sure proper set. Switches are set. Seatbelts are on. We're landing. Bamberg, traffic, Mooney 271 on Whiskey, final 2-3, full stop, Bamberg. Alrighty, I'm liking what I see. We're at 90 or 85 miles an hour now, which is perfect. I'm going to keep that in a little quick until I get real close, and then I'll bring it back, come back to 80. I'm going to put a little bit of back trim in in preparation for me slowing down a little bit. Okay, gear is down, gear is down. We're showing green. Alrighty, whoop, see? Good thing we have that speed. There's 85 now. All right, got runway is already made, so we'll come back on the power. All righty. There go the numbers. Look down the runway. Nice and easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Bamberg traffic, Mooney, two, seven, one, one, whiskey, back taxing, two, three, Bamberg. Call flaps coming open. Make our call that we're clear here. Yeah. Bamberg traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey is clear 23 taxi to fuel Bamberg. Alright, Bamberg County. They got cheap fuel. Alrighty, swinging her in. Right there, power back to a thousand. Everything comes off, we'll pull the mixture. Oh. my coffee. Yeah. Oh. There you have it, guys. Gonna get some fuel here at Bamberg, and then I'm gonna head back over to Somerville to meet that guy and fly that new Mooney. I'm probably not gonna throw any cameras on there because um, these will all be dead anyways. But stay tuned for news on that. Um, next video will be very well be that I'm selling this Mooney. I don't know though because every time you've been saying that makes me wanna. I really, really like this airplane, man. Been Chicago in it, Florida. Flew it from Seattle all the way to Charleston. I've got, I've got some time in this plane right here. I really like it. So if you guys like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram if you want to. All that jazz. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. So, uh, P.S., the last guy that got fuel here was a complete asshole. Left this hose, the fuel hose, on the ground left the ground wire all untangled in a big mess right here and then left that wide open too so it's sitting in the sun so um total dickhead did that but.